Hi, I'm Gordon Ung, Editor-in-Chief of Maximum PC, and I'm about to show you the ultimate PC, the 2014 Dream Machine. I say this truthfully, in 18 years of building Dream Machines, this year's is truly excessive and may be the one Dream Machine to rule them all. But that's always been our mandate with the Dream Machine, to build a computer that epitomizes our passion for the king of all technology, the PC. Some will say the Dream Machine isn't practical, nor even rational. We say, so what? This PC is designed to inspire us all at what can be done, not what can't be done. So put on your anti-static strap as we walk you through a $30,000 PC. The cherry on top of this year's Dream Machine is the custom-built Red Harbinger Cross Desk. And yes, it's truly the last desk you'll ever buy. It's beautifully made out of powder-coated aluminum and steel and features a single continuous piece of tempered glass as a desktop. Obviously, there's enough space to build two systems, but we actually could have used more, believe it or not. And yes, you can buy it because Red Harbinger is making 90 of them. This is number 37. This is our case. There are many like it, but this one is ours. As a father and son, I can honestly say we all need a good mother. So we picked two of the finest motherboards available to raise our chips. For the Devil's Canyon chip, we picked Gigabyte's GAZ97X Gaming G1 Wi-Fi BK. The claim to fame with this board is Gigabyte loads it with an OS, puts it in a server rack, and stress tests it for 168 hours. Only after it passes muster does the board get boxed up and sent out to be sold. So your chances of getting a dead board are practically zero. We also get creative Soundcore IP, a separated audio path for cleaner sound, and Burr Brown op amps. For our Ivy Bridge chip, we picked the ASUS Rampage 4 Black Edition. And yes, it's a black edition, so unlike Gigabyte, the board is almost all black. Besides its separated audio path, high-end DAX, and headphone amp, this board is the pinnacle of X79 boards and was intended solely to crush overclocking records, which it has. Both boards aren't cheap, but this is Dream Machine. We couldn't decide whether to use Intel's hot new Core i7-4790K, aka Devil's Canyon, or the 6-core Core i7-4960X, so we decided to use them both and let God sort it out. On the right is our quad-core Devil's Canyon processor that's been overclocked from its stock speed of 4 GHz to a reliable 4.8 GHz. We didn't hit 5 GHz, but few in the world have done it with this CPU, so we're not disappointed. On the left is the old standby, the Iverbridge E Core i7-4960X. It may be the older sibling to the Devil's Canyon, but it's still one hell of a CPU and cranks through multi-threaded tasks like no other publicly released CPU. For GPUs, we took the Gary Sinise approach to graphics cards. So when someone asked if we wanted a Radeon R9 295X2 or a Titan Z in this year's Dream Machine, we said, send everyone. And when they asked what we meant, we said, everyone! Paired with our Devil's Canyon box are a pair of EVGA GeForce Titan Z Hydro Copper cards. One of the issues with the Titan Z, besides its insane pricing, is the inability to get high enough clocks to beat other cards. With custom cooling and a lot of voltage, we were able to overclock the Titan Z to actually be faster than a lot of cards it normally couldn't beat. Unfortunately, we couldn't do anything about its price. How expensive? One Titan Z costs more than two 295 cards. And that makes the R9 295X2 and our Ivory Bridge E side a real deal. They may be $1,500, but it's a lot cheaper than a Titan Z card. Even better, the R9 295X2 is no slouch, and most consider it the fastest video card in the world. You saw this 4K monitor last year, and it's back, but with a friend. One ASUS PB321Q for our Radeon machine, and one for our Titan Z box. This Indium Gallium Zinc Oxide monitor is a gorgeous 32 inches of IGZO pixel density. And unlike those puny 24 inch and 27 inch 4K monitors, it's large enough so even people with horrible vision like me can read things on the screen. For this year's Dream Machine, we used the Nerd Special Ops mantra of no slot left unfilled. So we slammed in 64 gigs of Corsair Dominator Platinum DDR3-2400 into the Iverbridge E system and another 32 gigs into the Devil's Canyon machine. That's 96 gigabytes of RAM for this year's Dream Machine, which is a record amount. What makes the RAM special this year, though, are the three prototype RAM coolers that are fully programmable for color. 
Those coolers really tie the room together. For storage, we shot for the moon this year and used 28 terabytes of storage. For primary boot devices, we're running a pair of Samsung one terabyte EVO SSDs in RAID 0 for each side. That's a spacious two terabytes to work with for each machine. For raw storage, we went with the biggest drives we could find. Hitachi's enterprise class six terabyte Ultrastar HE6 hard drive. Each drive has a crazy seven platters, which the company could only do by sealing them up and filling them with helium. And yes, we tied these drives down to keep them from floating away. Since both are separate machines, we also added our current favorite NAS unit, a QNAP Turbo NAS TS470, so we could share files without having the sneaker net from one side to the other. And yes, 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 we didn't forget the optical drives. We tried that two years ago and the bite marks in our asses are still there. So lighten up, Francis. We used two LG WH16NS40 Blu-ray drives. That's 125 gigabytes on one BD disc, if you can afford it, that is. Plumbing and PCs isn't fun, but when you have this much hardware, you have to cool it. For that, we turn to frozencpu.com for $1,500 worth of XSPC radiators, EK Supremacy water blocks, rectangular bay reservoirs, and enough fittings, hoses, and pumps to keep even Mario happy. This year's dream machine is a green machine. Unlike the typical gas-powered PCs, it runs on completely clean electricity. We're doing our part for the world. Seriously, running this much hardware doesn't take a beefy power supply, it takes two beefy power supplies. For our Ivory Bridge E Radeon combo, we're using Corsair's brand new platinum rated AX1500i PSU. It's a smart PSU and lets you see how much power you're using in real time and even switch from multi-rail to single rail all within the OS. For our Devil's Canyon Titan Z combo, EVGA's Supernova 1600 G2 came to the rescue. This baby can supply 133 amps on the 12 volt rail itself. In total, we're talking 3100 watts for Dream Machine. And yes, we had to plug it into two separate circuits in our office to make it work. Audio is still important, so this year we tapped Yamaha for its RX V477 receiver and its NSPA40 5.1 speakers. What's great about these speakers is they're towers, so you just put them alongside the gigantic case rather than taking up any space on your beautiful desktop. Razer's wireless mouse isn't just beautiful and unpronounceable, but the Ouroboros is kick-ass worthy. It has an adjustable shell, removable finger rests that connect by magnet, how cool is that? And its 8200 DPI fourth generation laser sensor will work on any surface, except for glass. So, if you're gonna use it on this desk, you're gonna need a mouse pad. $10,000 worth of video cards, 28 terabytes of storage, who cares? The one piece of hardware that really stole the show in this year's Dream Machine is Corsair's amazing K95 RGB keyboard. This fully mechanical keyboard features individually programmable keys that you can set to one of 16.8 million colors. You can even program the keyboard to reproduce a splash effect as you type on each key. Let's just say this keyboard ain't going back to the lab, it's coming home with me. 